Welcome to the Farcast here at Shadron State College. I'm Daniel Binkard with Alex Helmbrecht, and we're talking to Megan Northrup today, who is the Student Activities Coordinator over in the Student Center. Uh, Megan, can you tell us a little bit about your job? But before that, where where do you come from? What's your backstory? My backstory. So I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, went to school at South Dakota State University, where I got my bachelor's in dietetics aka like nutrition. A lot of people don't know what dietetics is, but it actually okay. wasn't dietetics slash nutrition. And then I also got my master's at South Dakota State University. Um, and it's a long name, but basically nutrition. Right. And then I also did my internship during that, and that was at the University of South Dakota. So to be a dietitian, you have to do an internship, which is about 10 months when you get to pay and work for free. Pay to work. One of one of those situations. Oh, that's the best kind. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Boy. Absolutely. Free. It's not even free labor. It's paid labor. You <laughs> have to pay to yeah. be there. Um, so, at that point, I was in Sioux Falls still, and then after that, I moved to Ohio, in Ashland, where I followed my now husband to Ashland. He had a really cool opportunity to work there, and I wasn't really doing much. I was just getting ready to take my board, so I was studying and doing all that, and I was like, well, I guess I can study anywhere. (laughs) So I was finishing up my master's and then studying and finishing up my thesis work and basically moved to Ashland, Ohio, and was like, what am I doing here? I'm 13 hours away from home, didn't know anybody. We were living with four guy roommates and then me and Riley, so that I'm was, sure that was fun. <laughs> yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> let me tell you. And they're all cross country. If you know anything about cross country boys, they don't always smell great because mm-hmm. they're constantly working out, they're constantly running, and then they just be sopping wet from their workout, and then lay on the couch, and I would just stare at them like, I'm so grossed out right now. <laughs> cleaning up after people. It was quite an experience, but it was really fun and just something new. So we lived there and I started working eventually after I got my boards um, done and all that. And, you know, I think you graduate from college and you're like, you know, I've done all this work, this internship, I did grad school, like I deserve to make over $60,000 because that's what they told me I would make. And then I started applying for jobs and I was like, well, I'm just going to take whatever I can get. So yeah. I ended up working actually for a Head Start. Okay. Um, and it was actually Medina slash Worcester. Medina was really heavily, um, I don't know if involved is the word, but they had a lot of um, heroin and drug and overdoses. Mm. And so working at a Head Start, you're working with a different population and then I was doing home visits for nutrition. So I'm out there like, I'm going to make this impact in the health world. Well, then I ended up just being like, hey, don't let your kid eat Cheerios off your floor because there was, you know, a piece of poop right next to it. Oh, man. And don't feed your one-year-old, you know, Mountain Dew in the morning or at all. You know, let's stick to water. And so it was just such basic things where I was like, gosh, I, you know, thought I was going to be doing these great things. And really anyone could kind of go in and say, hey, you know, these are, and it was really more just counseling is what I found. So it wasn't my dream job, but I really learned some crazy life experiences and got to meet a whole different, um, I mean, we're still, there's, we've had this big argument. They, Ohio thinks they're in the Midwest. However, I don't think they're in the Midwest. Eastern time zone, so close to, you know, so it didn't seem like the Midwest to me where I grew up, you know, Nebraska, South right. Dakota, it mm-hmm. very much did not seem Midwestern to me because um, Ohio is so populated. I mean, you'd go 15 minutes in any direction and you'd find a town three times the size of Shatteron. So and tollways everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah tolls. Really. I didn't even know about tolls. Uh, yeah. I didn't either. Yeah. Until you start, you know, I made that 13 hour trip because we were poor. And so you have to drive. Many times, <laughs> 13 hours was a struggle. So that's kind of where we're at before all of this. And so you were in Ashland, or while well, well, your husband Riley was working in Ashland, uh, you were working for this Head Start organization, and then he came to CSC and 
followed again. Correct. Okay. Okay. It was kind of like a, here we are. We know we're not going to be here forever. Sure. But let's kind of, you know, because he worked for um, Judd Logan, who is this. And even I learned a lot from him. You know, he's a four-time, I think, four or five, four-time, four or five-time Olympic athlete. You know, he was so inspirational. Like, he could motivate any room. He just has a great energy and has this pro track program that really was just taking off. And so it was such a great experience for Riley. And I was like, well, I got to make it a good experience for myself too. So, yeah, we were definitely there and kind of like – we don't know what the next step will be, but hopefully something will kind of appear and we'll just kind of live our little young lives and just live by the seat of our pants. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. So, so uh, based on your education and, and your interests, it's pretty easy to see that uh, nutrition and, as you mentioned, dietetics plays a large role in your life. How do you try to incorporate that in your professional life and kind of in your current role now? Yeah. Um, so really, you know, nutrition, I do ad teach adjunct right now in food science. So I do get to at least use some of that education, that master's program that you, you we pay for and think that we're going to get this extra pay. And, you know, Shadron has really, this has been the first time working adjunct that I've actually seen a benefit in getting my master's. So that was really rewarding for me of like, oh, finally, like something, you know, feels like this education is paying off in, in some capacity. But being able to use that in the classroom, obviously that knowledge has been huge. Um, but also just when working with students, because I think the more you look into nutrition, a good nutritionist or dietitian will not just look at food. You have to look at the whole person and the whole body and stress and all these things that you go through, you know, especially as a student and their whole, you know, they go from their parents cooking and doing all this stuff for them or, you know, whoever going out to eat all the time to now eating in the calf and trying to figure out things on their own for the first time. So really um, trying to be there for them, for those kind of things as well with students, because you have to look at them as a whole student and, as a holistic person because they're stressed out and they're not drinking water and they're not sleeping, their health is going to decline and that's probably going to affect their academics as well. You're not going to do as well in class if you're not sleeping at night, if you're not taking care of yourself. So I really try and make sure when I'm talking to students, like, how much sleep are you getting? Like, you seem extra stressed. Like, what's going on here? Because at the end of the day, if we aren't looking out for them as a whole student, I don't, you know, know why I would be there because that's, you know, what I'm passionate about of making sure that we're really, I'm really looking at them as a person. Sure. I've always wanted to ask a nutritionist this. Why is it so expensive to eat healthy? Do you have an answer? Why is it so expensive? Well, it, I, I mean, I guess I should probably explain. No. I, it, it's like... You could go to McDonald's and get two burgers for $2 or something like that. But if you wanted to make a really nice salad with smoked salmon and I don't know, what's the, like uh, some superfood, like a chia right. seed or right. something, you know, it's going to be expensive. Oh, 100%. Really, it just comes down to processed foods. Processed foods are cheaper. We have found, you know, if you look back to the Great Depression and these times when we had no food and we found since then, like, hey, we need to figure out how to get such an abundance of food, and we found how to make it the cheapest way possible. Add sugar, cheap. Add salt, cheap. You know, what additives can we add to make this as cheap as possible? And that inevitably makes the food more processed and less healthy. Okay. So over time, we've just found how to process food enough to where it still tastes really good, right? Oh, like, yeah, Doritos. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> and these, you know, the people that manufacture Doritos or Cheetos, they are making them to make them addictive. They make these foods so it's the crunchiest, cheesiest, right amount of combination to where you're not, you know, once you pop, you can't stop. Literally, that's mm -hmm. what they want you to do. They want you to open that bag of chips and they want you to eat the whole thing and love them. So they're literally food scientists and people out there that are paid 
to make you want to eat the whole bag. Wow. So moderation is that much harder. Mm-hmm. But when you're making, you know, when you're growing spinach, you're not really doing that, right? I mean, we have GMOs and we have ways to make things crispier and look better and taste better. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be spinach. Yeah, I, I think we, <laughs> I always been joking with Brittany the last couple of weeks, we have had a spaghetti squash on our counter for like two weeks. From and, Teresa Frank, <laughs> yeah. me too. Yeah, I was like, well, I, it look, I don't know if I want to make that. <laughs> what did I hear recently? Uh, they've been uh, adding engineering to get more sugar in certain vegetables and increase that sweetness. Yeah. Is that? Because that's what consumers want. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're making foods that are less healthy, but are what the consumers are asking for and what we're wanting. So until, you know, we step up for our own health and we start actually purchasing the foods that are healthy and not you know, a sugar filled or not as processed, you know, we're never going to change because where the money's at is where, you know, the manufacturer is going to go. Sure. So, but there has been a huge increase as you've probably seen in the amount of health foods or health claims that these foods have, because there is more of a push now, I think, to have healthier options Mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing that shift. Yeah. So you you mentioned talking about uh, the person as a whole in their environment and, and everything else. I think that's a, a good connection to your other role uh, beyond teaching with the community building that you do with the students at the Student Center. Can you talk a little bit about what goes into that part of your job? Yeah. So, you know, when I look at my education and what I felt was really lacking sometimes – when I got out of college was like, I had no critical thinking skills. <laughs> I knew how to follow a rubric. I knew how to do what I had needed to do to get an A, right? right? But I felt like I didn't understand the critical thinking aspect of being innovative and creative and being able to, you know, given a project, There isn't a rubric. There Mm -hmm. isn't something lining this out exactly how to do it. Your supervisor is not going to be there every, you know, holding your hand along the way. So I really found with my first job of I at the um, Head Start, I created my own nutrition program. So from week one to week 12, you know, I made a whole program and I had to look up research and do all these things. And It was such a great experience for me because I got to be creative and innovative for the first time because I got to make something without any guidelines because they weren't nutrition experts. They weren't going to tell me, no, I was now the expert. So I was like, all right, let's go. And so that was so exciting for me. And when, you know, looking at the community of the pit and all these different things, I want the students to be able to be innovative and creative and critically think on their own and build a community of where they can feel like they can, you know, create a different event that's never been done. To me, that's exciting. We can keep doing the same things. That's great as long as we can prove that, you know, this is a great event and everyone wants to keep coming. But why keep doing the same things? Because it's easy. I want them to be innovative and creative and create basically a community where they're not scared to fail. Because I think so many students are so afraid to fail because then I won't get my A, I won't get my 4.0, and then I won't get the job I want. And Mm. so creating a community where it's okay to fail, because guess what? You're going to figure out how to deal with it now instead of later, because failure is inevitable. So we talked a little bit earlier this semester about revitalizing the pit, and you had a couple of students who were really um, making that happen. So since we talked to you then... Uh, what are some of the events that they've put on this semester that that have really changed things up? Really, we've done a lot of the same ones that okay. we've always done, to be honest. Um, one of the newer ones we started when I got here was the video game tournament. Um, that was something that students really wanted, and but that, again, took a lot of critical thinking. Oh, Details, yeah. how many consoles do you need? What games are you going to have? Do you have the games? Apparently, you have to download them to the... I don't know anything about these things. But they had to really think through these details. And, 
you know, it wasn't a huge success the first time, but they did really well. And then the second time around, it got even better. And That's great. So it's really cool just to see them, you know, think through the processes because I think sometimes, you know, especially in your first, you know, 100, 200 level class, you're more looking at mastering content, I think is how people, usually, you know, they're mastering that content to then be able to put it out there. But I want them to start just what do you want to do? What are you interested in? Mm -hmm. Are you interested in painting? Cool. Let's do a sip and paint. Um, then they made it spooky this year because it was around October, you right. know, yeah. just kind of giving them that freedom to be creative and be innovative and not be, like I said, afraid to fail. Because that's why I tell them all the time, something's not going to work out. But don't sit there and cry or get upset or stressed, you know, face it straight on and say how we have a problem. What's our solution now? How, how would you, and I know you mentioned that you serve as an adjunct professor, but how would you describe your full-time job to someone who's not acquainted with CSC nomenclature? Like if you say the pit to my yeah, mom yeah. or dad, exactly. they're like, you yeah, know, thinking of like a snake pit yeah. or something. But like, how do you explain what you do to someone you've just met at, say, a wedding or um, someone who's in town visiting? It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... I'm getting better at explaining it, but I still feel like I have so many facets of my job that, yeah, if you say the pitch to somebody that doesn't go to they're like, what's that? So I really look at my job as more of developing leadership um, because that's what I am interested in and want to do for students because I work with Senate and CAB. And then again, people don't know what those things are. So I just really explain it more as development of leadership and working with students to kind of, or not kind of, but to do events, create new events, do different programming on campus, and just expand the engagement at CSC. And is it a typical 7.30 to 4.30 gig or, you know, some nights you have to work until 1 or, or whenever the student center closes? Exactly. So on every Thursday night, the pit has an event. Um, so I am there until 10 o'clock tonight at a soccer tournament. And then next week, I will be there till after midnight for a Halloween dance. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Oh, Perfect yeah. time of year. Yeah. Yep. So it's definitely not the average, you know, when you look at Shattern, most people are here at 730 and they leave at 430. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I come in at nine and I, you know, Monday and Tuesday this week, I came in at nine and didn't leave till 730. So... It's just depending, most students can't meet until, you know, those after hours from yeah. around six or yeah. whatever. And so we really do work a lot later in different hours. That's kind of what the job requires. Exactly. You got to meet, the students aren't up and about at 730. No. However, I wish I could, if I could do a 12 hour day and get in and solid, I, I would love to do that, but it's just too draining. But yeah. Um, the only backside of that is, is I am here when the students are here and it is very hard to get any of the little things done because I'm so accessible to them, mm -hmm. which is great though, because when they have a question or they need somebody, you know, I'm pretty much there in my office for the majority of the time, hopefully yeah. to be able to answer whatever questions they have. I'm glad to hear that. From what I've seen this year, I've been to a few of those events to take promotional photos. Um, was it the kickball tournament? Mm -hmm. and Soccer tournament sounds like fun, too. So uh, it was good turnout at the ones that I've seen. Yeah, we've actually had really good engagement. And I do think, like you were kind of saying before, with the additions that we've made in the pit, we were, re you know, we had all these roadblocks of what the pit looked like, what they wanted the pit to look like. And you know, we have that paneling that's in there. And they're like, yeah. I hate the paneling. Can we paint it? Of course, we can't paint it. We can't. Well, let's cover it up. How can we cover it up? Yeah. Let's get these wood panels and stick them up with 3M tape, you know. And then we had a student make a mural. So really, I think the additions, and we also did like Nintendo 64, and we added a hoop shoot. So we added things that they wanted and that they were asking for because we had – the Sarah Flores, she did a survey at yeah. the end of last year to see what do students want to see. So it wasn't just the pit kids. They were really looking into what do the students want. And I think that has increased our activity in general just because they're down in the pit more. They understand that we have events and we kind of have those loyal people that are down in the pit and will come to every event and 
are super involved in that way. Well, and just from an institution level, it's important that the college do things like those, like what Sarah initiated with that survey, and then tangibly show the the students the outcomes of that. I, that's really important. Yeah, yeah, a good start to finish. Yeah. And it was cool for her to, I mean, she had never done, you know, she's um, in special education, um, special ed education, and she's like, I don't know how to do a survey. And I was like, I know you can do it. And like, you're such a smart girl. Like, I know you can do this. And she was like, okay. So she did the survey. She, you know, relayed the information back to me. And then she followed through with making sure, like, these are the things we're going to do. So I just feel like a lot of these students are getting such great things to take on to their next job of what have you, you know, what programs have you done? You know, people in a lot of different areas can say, oh, yeah, I was in this club. But I think when you're a part of the pit, you have to do an event and you have to, you know, do something from beginning to end. And that shows a lot of great value, I think, in yeah. just the learning process. Well, just like CSE Live workers when they have to troubleshoot, you know, I mean, sure, it, it you may not work in broadcasting, but w- wherever you're going to work, things are going to go wrong. And you need yeah, to you want to have those critical thinking skills yeah. and, uh, you know, just kind of a sanity check for yourself when you're trying to figure um, start to finish. What do I need to adjust here to make this work? Mm-hmm. What, what's, what should I check first versus what should I check last? Um, so can you answer from an organizational standpoint and for our audience who might not be familiar with the college, um, who is putting on events at the pit? Because I know we have like a housing side and a pit specific side. How does that work? So if it's a student event, there's kind of three areas how I look at it because I'm involved with the pit is you have RLA, so housing, and they do like 150 events. I don't know if that's a semester, a year, but they are almost every single night having something for the students to do, a and lot of for different varieties too. And RLA is the Residence Res- Life Association. Association. Okay. Yep, yep. Sorry, all of our little acronyms. Yeah. And then the pit is what I oversee, but they are also a student org, but they are required – basically by me slash VP John Hansen to have an event every Thursday. Okay. Um, we have changed the time. It used to actually always be nine to midnight. We were actually getting a lot of student complaints and um, coaches and some faculty because it was so late. I mean, students were leaving at 11 and I asked one of my students, I was like, how often did you go to your 8 a.m. Friday class? Cause yeah. she's required to work. Right. And she was like, I skipped a lot. Mm-hmm. So really looking at it as when we were talking about the whole st- holistic student and them getting sleep, I was like, this just isn't what I want, you know, I want the pit to represent is this late night and then we don't go to class the next day. Mm-hmm. So we've changed it to almost all the events besides the dances are until 10 because I want those students to go to class. I want them to feel refreshed. I know the next day, every day I had a headache on Friday because yeah. – you know, no matter what, I was still kind of getting up mm-hmm. early, and it was just a struggle every Friday. So I knew the students were feeling the same way, and I, most of them are used to staying up late, let's be honest. But, you know, it still took a while to kind of calm down from those events. So and that's one way that we really did kind of change the pit. Sorry, I don't even remember what the original question no, was. No, I kind of went on exactly. a tangent there. It, 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 it brings me to that idea of we want to set a good example because we've had discussions on our end in various projects and it's, yeah, it's just good practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, so then the other event, sorry, that's what we were talking about is CAB. So CAB okay. stands for Cam- Campus Activity Board or Senate. So any CSC recognized student org, they also all have their own meetings, um, their own events. So really across the board, we do have a lot of things oh, yeah. student-led going on on campus. So anybody who says there's nothing to do here? There's always something to do. <laughs> Go to the student center. Yeah, ask, yeah. ask Taylor or I. We're like, there's too many There's too many things <laughs> going on. <laughs> I think that's a good problem to have. At least uh, I, I don't have to deal with the uh, day-to-day, which I'm thankful for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it sounds like he got it well in hand. Yes. So yep. And of course, you always have your theater stuff. I mean, there's sure. still all yeah. those other things going on on campus as yeah. well. But as far as those student-led, those are really kind of the main the main areas, I would say. Great. Where are we at, Alex? Uh, I was just going to ask, what are some of your interests outside of work? I love podcasts. Oh, okay. Well, good, good. 
Really, like, one of my favorite things to do is walk my dog and listen to a podcast, um, kind of go around the Sea Hill area or kind of, like, around campus and just walk and get outside. And what are the podcasts that you're listening to? Oh, gosh. I really like <laughs> – one's called The Skinny Confidential. It's, like, a very different kind of podcast. Okay. Um, it's a husband and wife that kind of go into – all sorts of different ki- types of like categories and that sort of thing. The other one is, I think it's called The Great Life or The Greatness School, I think is what it's called. Um, and then Life Hacks is another one I just started listening to. And that one I thought was super interesting because it actually goes over college debt. So it's something oh, I've good. kind of been wanting to bring up to different people of, you know, I think podcasts are a new venue for a lot of things and having a, you know, a class listen to a 20 minute podcast and then talk about it, I think would be really interesting because it just talks about college debt. How do you make friends in college? Um, So there's a lot of different, you know, college based Mm -hmm. um, ideas there. So that was really cool. And actually a student, Emily Hansen was the one who who told me about it. So I had to check it out. And then if I'm on a trip, it's always some sort of creepy criminal investigation type. <laughs> yeah, that's what Brittany just listened yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. It seems like I keep hearing those popping up. What was it? True murder? Is that? Yeah, there's like, there's, there's, all different. there's so many. People are just fascinated yeah. with murder. I know. It's <laughs> terrible. And then I always, we always Maybe that's to what it. we need to do is have a murder <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, that next step. We'll it's appropriate for Halloween. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, we interview Khan. On Halloween, oh, we're gonna have, yeah. he'd Marshall, have some so good. Maybe we'll have, have to have some... a spooky question. <laughs> there you go. But no, there's a lot of really good pod. There's something out there for everyone. I think cereal was the one that got me interested in first. That's like yeah. the, um, it's another murder type mm-hmm. investigation, mm-hmm. and so yeah, all those are always pretty interesting. Great. Kind of like a making the murder, but yeah, you know. On a podcast, you yep. can just In listen to it form. as you drive. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned a little bit about uh, coming to Shadron, and, and our question here for you is: Did Riley have to sell you on moving to Shadron? <laughs> I told him this morning. I was like, "There's this really funny question," and we talked about it a little bit because I remember he came back from a meet or something, and he had talked to Brad and. Knew Brad was thinking about leaving, and that oh, and I'm sorry, I should interrupt. For those who don't know, R- Riley oh, yeah. Northrup is the head women and men track and field coach, indoor and outdoor. So yes, they count as different sports. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I'm sorry, continue. Yeah, so he was an assistant um, back in Ashland, making you know pennies and dimes for for what he was doing and and all of that stuff. So. When he went and talked to Brad, and Brad was the former head coach, and Brad was like, yeah, I really want to move back home kind of thing, and you should apply for this job if I leave, and I'll let you know. So I think Riley was, like, super hesitant when he first kind of brought it up, like, yeah, what if the Shattern position opened? I'd been here once. Went to the Ritz to eat breakfast, I think, <laughs> as we were passing through and we saw the Ritzens and then I think that was about it. So I couldn't even remember what the town looked like. I remembered it was very small. <laughs> and when I had, you know, after I had left Sioux Falls, I was like, I want to be in a big town. I just, I don't know why. That was just kind of what I envisioned because ever since I lived in Sioux Falls, I thought Sioux Falls was a small town. And I don't know the population, like maybe 500. I don't know if I'm even making that up. Sioux Falls is 200? huge. I don't know. <laughs> it's grown a lot since even yeah. I've been there. So I'm always visioning, you know, that I'm going to be in this big town with all these opportunities. And Sue so was a little hesitant to like kind of bring it up. And then later on when it started to get a little bit more serious, he was like, so what do you think <laughs> about Shadron? And I was like, how close is it to home? Because at that point we were 13 hours away from our family. And I was sick of driving 13 hours just to see them. And he's like, it's about, he always is under dramatic when he says (laughs) distances. Yeah. Yeah, Four and a half, I think is what he said at first. I'm like, oh, wonderful. Like, and so I was like, well, what's in the town? Like, you know, so I kind of start looking up jobs and nutrition and there wasn't really much popping up. And I was like, you know, a head coaching job doesn't 
come around every day. And if you know Riley, he is so passionate about Shatter and like he loves this place. He literally talks about retiring here. <laughs> so he, you know, really didn't have to sell me too much just because I knew how much he loved it. And he had friends here and we had more of a community than we did when we moved to Ashland because we didn't know anybody. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to move closer to home. So I was excited about that. And we we're like, here we go. <laughs> so how did you react when you found out the actual distance from Sioux to Sioux Falls? Oh, I'm sure I was a little annoyed. <laughs> well, As I always am when he says, oh, it's two hours. And it's really like seven. I mean, that's an exaggeration. But it's usually at least an hour, two hours off of what <laughs> his mind thinks it is. Well, and it's probably maybe important to, to denote, was it... Pre-engagement or post-engagement? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So I think this was all pre-engagement. Gosh, I'm, we got engaged in July, and he moved in August. So it was kind of well. He so in, he was working two major life things at yeah. the same time. So. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Well, and in his mind, we got engaged in July, and he thought we were going to get married in October. <laughs> <laughs> then again, with the time thing, I'm like. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that takes but we a got married time. in December. So good. We we always compromise a little bit. <laughs> Sign of a of a good marriage right there. Yeah, there you go. Um, but no, he loves it here and I and I really do love it a lot. You know, the people are what make Shatteron and yeah. everyone says that, but I really do mean it because yeah. we've made really great friends and great community here already. Which I mean we had friends in Ashland and, you know, the other towns before, but it just wasn't really the same. Yeah. Now you were a student athlete in college too, right? What did you compete in and, and how did you balance your time with your studies? Yeah. So I ran track all four years at South Dakota State. Um, I'd say at first, not very well, but I never really got terrible grades or, you know, anything wild like that. But I do remember coming to school and being like, I need to, my first semester, I need to get good grades because I just had heard from other people and friends, like, if you come in that first semester and you slack off, it's really hard to come back from that. So knowing that, I tried really hard my first semester and, and really did balance that time pretty well. However, why I got invested into nutrition is I ate my way through that calf. <laughs> <laughs> I was not eating while I was on my own for the first time. I mean, when I even think about exercising three hours a day, you know, on average, sometimes more or less, like I think about doing that right now, I'm like, that's so much time. <laughs> that is. Wow. Yeah. So when even football players, I know, you know, with their practices, it's even longer. So the way I I did it was just really focusing on my studies and getting my homework done as soon as I could using study table, using all of those things to get what I needed to done. But then also I had a lot of fun too. So it's really just balancing out, you know, what your priorities are. And school is my first priority and then track and then, you know, having fun. And I think I balance those all pretty well. Yeah. Like you said, all in moderation. Yeah, exactly. So if you had a, if I had a big test that week, I wasn't, you know, going out to events or doing anything. I, I was studying that weekend, but after those tests were over, I was out. <laughs> Good. So let's talk about, um, we'll, we'll ask you about enjoyable aspects of your job, but first I want to ask, um, how did you feel when you were nominated and you won the Eagle Impact Award as a professional staff member? That and tell us, tell us a little bit about what that is, too. Yeah. Um, so what I know about the Eagle Impact Award is that students nominated um, different staff and faculty. So there was a support staff, a staff, and a faculty, mm -hmm. and I would be considered staff. Um, and I actually know who nominated me. She is a sweetie. I figured it out within the whatever, you know, the letter or whatever yeah. they were saying written down. Um, but to my knowledge, it was just somebody that made an impact on them. And really, she made an equal impact on me as well. And Really, it was a humbling experience. I was so surprised. Like, I just didn't really think that, you know, you don't, you don't ever think, I don't think, that you're going to get an award. And, like, 
oh, it's here I healing. am, you know, <laughs> it is, but then it's also kind of nerve wracking. It's like, oh, all eyes are on me. I don't really feel like I'm that great. But <laughs> no, it was really, really cool. And it just kind of inspired me to even do more and just continue to do better. I know what I've said to other like employees and whoever that the students are like for a customer, the students are our customers, you know? Oh, yeah. So we have to take the time to put things down and listen to them and talk to them and, you know, make their time here, you know, the best that it possibly can. And sometimes, you know, I am in the middle of something and it's not great timing, but then I always have to remind myself that, you know, we wouldn't be here without the students and I wouldn't be here without those student leaders who volunteer hours and hours and hours of time to do the things that we do on campus. I mean... The homecoming committee we made with all students to help out the homecoming committee was huge. And they're all just volunteering their time. And that's what's wild to me because students love shattering. I know there's a lot of criticism or students love to complain, but they really do. Like I've just seen how much they truly do love shattering because they wouldn't be volunteering their time working as hard as they do if they didn't want to make it a better place and truly love it. So it just inspired me to to do better every day and just to, even when I'm feeling stressed or overworked, I'm like, you know, the other day I had a student, I was like, oh, just, you know, it's just not my week. It wasn't feeling great. And she sent me the nicest email. She had just gone back from the Nebraska State College System Conference and sent me an email about, you know, how I'd make an impact in her life and, you know, how grateful she was for me. And I like almost started crying. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is why we do what we do because, we want to impact them positively. And with the peer mentor program that we started this year, we had a student say, I just love Shattern so much and I want to come back and be a faculty here. Like those are the things that, you know, there's little moments of yeah, yeah. Of, of greatness where we all see in the students and we're like, yeah. this is why we do it. Yeah, those are the things you want to hear. Yeah, and they do. And I think people forget how much the students really do. But I get to be with Senate and CAB and all these people who – do volunteer their time. And I can tell you, Senate cares a lot about our school and they want to make it better all the time. So it's really inspiring. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, a, a good note to end on. We're going into the, the final section of this. The lightning round. The podcast. <laughs> yeah, the lightning round. Oh, dang. So we have five questions. So the first thing that comes to the, to the top of your head. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so we'll begin. Megan, what is a favorite movie of yours? <laughs> See, we, we didn't say your favorite absolute. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, Desert Island movie sort of thing. Okay, favorite movie <laughs> is, I don't know why Dumb and Dumber is coming to mind. Oh, that's oh, a, that's a classic. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Dumb classic. and Dumber. Okay. Always puts you in a good mood. It does. <laughs> First concert you attended? Christina Aguilera. <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, yeah. What year was that? Oh, I have no idea. Sometime in the 90s. Classic. Yes, yes, classic Christina. It was she still right sing? one during her first album. Oh, wow. So the Genie in the Bottle days. Yes. 98, yep. 99. <laughs> yes. Uh, I remember those days. Yeah. I was probably about 8 to 10, I'd say. <laughs> I kind of, I remember it, so I had to be pretty old because I don't feel like I remember things. <laughs> Did your parents take you? Yeah, but I don't think I let them sit with me. Oh, yeah. Well, no, yeah they, they sat like a few rows up, you yeah. know. I was you super can't be independent. Seen that yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, so, Megan, if Shatter State College wasn't the name, what would you name the college? Go Eags. I don't know. That's it. <laughs> go, go Eags, you. Yeah, yeah. What else would you call it? Board. What are our other answers? I was hoping you'd say like the Eagle Rewards app or something like that. <laughs> 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 Got to get the branding out there. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm terrible. That's um, why you're in marketing and you think of these great what, things. What uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other answers. The Josh US, Ellis said. You at CSC. Yeah. Yep, that'll work. Yeah. Josh Ellis had Faber from Animal House. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh. Yeah. Gosh. And then Kurt. Um, Not very creative. Kim Barker said like Northwest something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of be pulling because we're originally well, Northwest Nebraska Teachers College. I can't remember if that was an official name. Uh, though. Yeah, we were like the Nebraska State Teachers College, State and Normal Schools, Shattered Normal. Yeah. Well, I'm the worst. That's all right. No, that's a good one. <laughs> I think we got it's kind one. of a tough question. How many times have you been up to the top of Sea Hill? I'd say over thirty, quite a bit. 
Yeah, with walking your dog. Yeah. Okay, so th- this is a fitting one for you since your office is located next to the pit. Oh, yeah. Ping pong or pool? Ping pong. I think that's what I would go with, too. Uh, do we make it like the three-way question of do we add the hoop shoot in there, too, since you have that oh. now? Or the Nintendo yeah. 64? I, I would do... Oh, Play some I do Golden like... Um, what's it? The the car one where you... Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Yeah, yeah. I do like that. Great. I was going to say, I've honestly never played ping pong or pool down in the pit. Oh, well, so then... But don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, <that> was... <laughs> so if anyone thinks I spend all you of my time <laughs> down in the pit playing pool or ping pong, I wish. Is there a dartboard down there? There used to be, but there uh, is not anymore. Oh, okay. Shoot. But the hoop shoot is pretty cool if you haven't checked it out. It's what about, pretty fun. What about foosball? Is that still down there? Nope. So it's, it's pool, the hoop shoot... Video games, ping pong, and pool. Yep. Okay. We got a Nintendo 64 and an Xbox. Nice. The Nintendo 64 is hooked up to the projector screen. Good. That's what I wanted yeah. to ask because I yes. think that's a cool addition. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice area. Yeah. The projector really wasn't being utilized no. barely ever. So we thought that that would be a cool way to, to kind of liven the area up a little bit. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Megan. We yeah. sincerely appreciate you joining us. And it's thank been a pleasure talking me. to you. You too. Yeah, thank you.